So welcome back to episode two. Um, so this is the Brian Clough interviews with my dad, John Holmes, the tape that he's found in his garage after all these years. And um, give us a resume of what's going to happen in this one. Well, we've got a um, sign of the times. As you say, this is also social history. But first of all, he's going to talk about um, going to talk about hooliganism. So that's sign of the times. Um, he then talks, he's, he's, he's questioned about family. In a sense, he's, he's, he's asked about how safe children are, which links in a way to the idea of family stands, which we didn't have at the time. And it ends on a little gem about ladies' toilets at the Colic Road End. Oh yes, the ladies' toilets. This, 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 this is a, this is a, this is a gem, isn't it? And it, yeah. it, it's great. This, this, even that's going to just be air. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's listen to that now. Robin Garland's on the line. Robin, what's your question? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I like to ask Mr. Clough uh, what the average man on the terraces can do to su to support him in his fight against the hooligans. Well, Robin, it's a very very difficult question, and I've been asked it several times. All you can do is be, be well behaved yourself uh, and be as and be well behaved with the people around you and the people you come to the ground with because it is a minority we know it's a minority when 200 idiots run onto a pitch it's always the two or three that get over the barrier first well if we can raise the two or three out of our football grounds then we'll go a long way in solving the problem but reg you just be well behaved i'll make sure that my two children are well behaved and believe it or believe it not, if we all take responsibility, we'll put it right in a short period of time. Does that answer your question, Mr Garland? Uh, well, when there was an incident Saturday where there was a young idiot climbed the, the uh, piling of the floodlights and uh, yeah, he hung his scarf at the top and uh, as he was on his way down, there was a policeman waiting to arrest him and a section of the crowd attacked the policeman so that he could get away. And you know, the average man, people standing around, we just felt helpless, you know, to help the policeman. Yes, it's a very, very difficult problem. And I felt sorry if there was only one policeman. And I personally would have had several there. And um, the young man, or whatever description you can put to him, who climbed the pylon, should have been uh, in court within 24 hours. I believe they did get him afterwards. I'm absolutely delighted. And if there's anything, any time, that I can assist the police to not to get people, but to carry out the duty, then all I've got to do is knock on my dressing room door. I mean, basically, the message, Brian, is if you're going to cause trouble, don't come down the city ground, isn't it? Well, that is. That, that, that is obviously the message, but we don't want them not coming down here and then going going some trouble in the city. Well, that's true. I've got a feeling uh, that the two people that were talking to me earlier on about my feelings for Nottingham, I think Nottingham is a beautiful city. I don't want any idiot from anywhere, any time, destroying anything that's nice and good whether they're Nottingham people or born in Hong Kong. OK, Mr Garland, thank you. Thank you. Next on the line, I've got Mrs... First Lady as well. Mrs Norona. Is that right, Norona? Nice. Lovely. What's your question? Good morning. Um, Good morning, dear. I, I understand that uh, Forest is planning to make some changes at the ground this year, and I'm wondering if any separate provisions will be made for parents or people who wish to take their young children to matches. Um, I'm thinking... You know, particularly of, of people who either feel very threatened by large crowds or, or perhaps are claustrophobic. And um, if there was a separate, uh, a smaller enclosure where perhaps they wouldn't feel quite so threatened, you know, with uh, tickets to be sold only on the uh, sort of child or children accompanied by an adult basis. The best thing to do, my dear, is to buy a season ticket. We're spending £450,000 this year which is a lot of money in three months, on ground safety. Yeah. We are providing 600 new seats at the cost of something where near the region of £100,000. I suggest that if you have problems with this type of thing, come along by a seat where you can sit in comfort, have a good view, you can have your children alongside of you, and you will enjoy, I hope, a good game of football. I think, is it necessary if, uh, if a parent buys a season ticket, is it necessary to buy a season ticket? Well, I'm afraid so, yes. If they're occupying a seat, obviously, you'll have to buy season tickets for them as well. I know it's rather an expensive item, but if you want to come and watch football, then it's well worth it. It helps the club, it helps you, and if you see the type of stuff that we've provided this last 12 months, then you don't mind doing it at all if you're a good supporter. How, um, how safe is the uh, stand where, you know, 
How safe safe is it? How safe is it? It's as safe as any shop you go into. You go into Marks and Spencer's or Woolworths or whatever, wherever you do your shopping, if you have problems and you suffer from claustrophobia, then you have the problems in life. It's not a problem at the, uh, the forest ground. In fact, we're more open than, than any shop you go into. So it's very, very safe indeed. And thank you very much indeed for the question. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much indeed. On the subject of ground, and I, I take Mrs Narona's point, especially if she's never actually sat in the... Um, in the season ticket end, because uh, it is very civilised there, isn't it, Brian? It is, John. It's nice, it's happy, it's a good atmosphere. As I say, the stand I'm sitting in now, we have a magnificent view of the whole proceedings, and there's no excuse at all for anybody having any grumbles. We, we're spending £107,000, it is, on improved facilities in the Jubilee Club this coming season. Uh, so people will be able to join that and have a, you know, a look at the television and a half a beer if they wish after the match and have some comfort. The seats are magnificent. I don't think they're too expensive because we do try to entertain and there's no excuse. I think, we, it's, I think it's all part of the game, actually, the Jubilee. I mean, the Jubilee Lounge, um, it, it, it just is an extension to the game where you meet people who are fellow Forest supporters, isn't it? Yes, of course, and it, 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 it's a good feeling to be you know, with people who you've got something in common and there's a good spirit in the club. We've done the city of Nottingham proud this year, and I want the supporters of, uh, of Nottingham Forest Football Club to do the city proud also. We will keep doing our best. A young lady came up to me, she said she didn't want to go on the air, but she said, could you ask Brian Clough if he's going to do anything about the ladies' toilets at the Colic Road end? I'm not quite <laughs> sure. Um, I think the best thing I do is I better stand out there and nobody will go in. <laughs> She wasn't very happy with the toilet. She loves the team, but not the toilets. No, oh, well, that's the way it goes. I suggest she has a wee before she comes to the ground. I'll tell her that next time. It's really interesting, isn't it, how that the that football is much more it appears to be much more in the community. Do you think that was unique to Brian, though? Do you think Brian wanted to be? I think he was one of the people who wanted it. Yeah, he was, he was after football in the community. Yes, although now it's lots of county football in the community. But yes, he was. He was definitely into football and getting into the community. But Jimmy yeah. Cyril felt the same. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it just because already even in this kind of you know just this first fifteen minutes of this kind of social history, these two episodes, we've, we've covered quite a lot of the themes that are current potentially now still, yeah. but actually things that potentially could you know th th these ideas were being pioneered there, weren't they? Well, um, in, in this in this episode three, we do with facilities for the disabled again. Yes. That's something that was coming up, but it wasn't um, tackled properly. Well, this guy didn't feel it was being tackled properly. Yeah. So we hear that one. We hear a little bit about Larry Lloyd, um, um, how it's pretty obvious Brian Clough thinks Larry Lloyd should be in the full England team. Only yeah. I shouldn't read, read into him, but I think it is. And um, the other thing is interesting on this one is that um, Forrest are becoming internationally famous. I mean, people are going to come over to this testimonial match from Holland. They were famous in Holland, and they be, they, the, the, the matches were being shown all over the world. And what was obviously actually galling people like Brian Clough was they got very little money for it. So this is pre-Sky. Yeah. Now yeah. they get lots of money for it. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So we'll hear that episode uh, next. Uh, next one, it should be below this one. Any comments? Remember that again. We re reiterate here. It, it, this is we're trying to record social history down here, yeah. Nottingham social history, but football social history as well. So uh, yeah, please re re look below. There's some other videos on there as well um, from uh, your interviews with uh, people of uh, from the world of rock, uh, mm -hmm. and and also there's more interviews, of course, in your book as well. So, uh, but I won't go on about that too much. Uh, so uh, let's uh, go, let's end this episode and uh, see you on the other side in episode three. Mm -hmm.